Well, good afternoon. It's Monday afternoon in Memphis, Tennessee, and I want to, this is Voss Graham. I'm an, a successful entrepreneur for 36 years, and I'm here to share some information for business leaders to show you the importance of a concept known as hyper growth. Now, most, most leaders are not, mm, let's see, convinced that hyper growth is possible. They don't even think it is a term that's believable. Uh, and that's an unfortunate, uh, very unfortunate belief and, and uh, well, belief, because that's, that's what starts all your attitudes and, and behaviors and performance relative to hyper growth. This is another reason why so many companies struggle year to year with the same level of income as they don't understand that hyper growth will get them over the hump and develop their organization into a viable, stable, long-term, successful company. Now, I'm gonna explain all that. So first off, let's say, what is hypergrowth? Now, the best definition I can come up with, as I understand it, is anything that's above the uh, industry average in growth, okay? So let's say you're in an industry that only grows 5%. Well, your hyper growth goal should be 10%. That's a 2x factor. Now, why is that important? Why would that be important? And it's not 25%. That might be outside your, your realm of believability or even 50%. Yet, as I look around the landscape of businesses, I see companies growing and at a 2x, 3x, 5x, and sometimes 10x. Uh, uh, scaling speed or, or rapid growth uh, speed, and what it what makes them different? Now, in some cases, it's true they have innovative new products that nobody else has, so they just they just take over the market. But these companies that cruise along always outperforming the industrial average or their their industry average, they are the ones who believe that uh, things are possible. Like instead of 5%, you go for 10%. If your norm is 10%, then you go for 20%. Now, the reality is it's extremely important for several reasons. Number one, the growth allows for more opportunities both within your organization and the ability to attract really good talent into your organization because they wanna be in a high growth, high envi environment, high performance environment that's, that's actually just, I mean, it's, it's growing and there's opportunities. Nobody wants to go into a company that's, that's on the decline and stagnating and headed in the wrong direction because it's, there's no future to that. They'll just spend their time and then retire or uh, wait for some type of severance pay because the company is is struggling and cutting folks, and that's an unfortunate uh, and very unfortunate sideline. And I I don't like to see companies cut people, and it's really because they're not paying attention to this concept of hyper growth. Now there's some things that you need to do in order to to have hyper growth. Number one, you have to get the beliefs right. I know I've worked with a lot of uh, sales teams that had to transition from transactional selling to major account selling. And the biggest problem that we had was to get people to think that it was possible to sell million dollar accounts versus a, a $5,000 account multiple times. They just couldn't get their mind around the size of the contracts. And once somebody did, then they looked at that person, they said, oh, well, he's no smarter than me or she's no smarter than me. I've got the same abilities. What are they doing? Are they, they're just following that system? Oh, huh, okay, well, I think I'll try it. And then one by one, they, they followed along and all of a sudden the company was growing at actually almost 5X versus 2X. And it was very simple once they made that transition mentally. You can think of it as a mindset change. Now, those of you who really don't get this mindset thing, you might want to investigate my partner's uh, uh, website on interactive 
mindset.com and she can uh, explain the power of mindset and she and she knows the the data the the science behind it that it's uh, it is the starting point for all change and and acceptance and um, transformation now a couple of other things i want you to think about from a leader's point of view i always set a goal of it's we should be doubling our company uh, and I've, I've gotten 3x in the past before so i know that it's possible and i want to say that that 2x is a goal now again i say if you're in a if you're in an industry where that's not feasible you still need to think about how do how do i double the the average for the industry because that'll accelerate your growth and get you to the 2x factor faster now let me just point out a few few uh, math <laughs> elements here to you. Think about this, the 2X factor. You double your business. Now, if you increase your business by 10% per year, you'll, you'll hit the double the size of your business in about just a, a little over nine years with compounding effects. If you hit 20%, you're going to hit a, a doubling factor in five years. You follow the drift here? If you do it in 25% uh, uh, growth targets, you'll double your business every four years, rounding up. And it goes on and on. 50%? you double your business every two years. Now, why is doubling your business so important uh, in my, you know, well, to you or anyone else? First, the opportunities that you will receive by having a growth organization is phenomenal. I've already mentioned talent, the attracting of, of high quality talent, but there's also factors like how do you fund the new systems that it's going to require as you bring more and more people on to service that much business? As you bring on the business, you have to upgrade your computers, your, your technology, your systems, your infrastructure, your supply chain. All of this has to be funded. Now, unless you just have several millions of dollars uh, just sitting on the sideline, just waiting to go in the form of some type of capital, well, that's well and good. I funded my business through just organic growth. And I would say that that's the way to do it. I prefer that versus uh, a, something that I've seen where uh, venture capitalists are brought in and they take over a percentage of your business. Well, then you lose your control. You lose your freedom. They're basically telling you what and when to do things, which is not exactly what entrepreneurs like to hear, at least if you're like, like me as an entrepreneur and most of my entrepreneurial clients, they're not real too, they're not really excited about having somebody else controlling them. The, uh, the other thing is long-term stability. The more you grow, the more profits you make. I mean, that's just, it, it's got to be. Now, granted, you may have some cash flow issues that you have to monitor and watch, but that's a, that's a, that's an optimization of your product mix and pricing elements to make sure that you have high, high profitability built in to your business model. If you've got the profitability, you will be funding cash big time. I, again, I can tell you that from experience. When we hyper growth, we have our hyper growth spurts. I can tell you that all of a sudden we're cash flush and I love it. Uh, so does my partner. Uh, and she particularly loves it because she is not quite as entrepreneurish as I am and she likes her security. So that's, that's cool. I don't, I don't argue with that. I totally understand where she comes from. Uh, risk is something that I've grown up with and it's second nature to me. I, I don't mind taking a little risk in order to grow the company. Now, calculator risk. I don't bet the bank by any stretch, and I'm never going to do that. But, and I don't advise you to do it either. As, as a, as a uh, consultant and a business advisor, I would have to say no, no, no to any 
bet the bank scenarios. That's just, that's a form of gambling. And a lot of times you lose. And then what do you do? So again, I've, <laughs> I did five years of turnaround work and a year and a half in the bank and work workout. So I totally get the, the uh, ugly side of business. And I just want to share this, this hyper growth concept with you. I believe it's an underutilized uh, uh, goal or motivation for an organization to, to get out of their comfort zone and move forward. Either way, status quo is the death of innovation and growth. I mean, it's just, it is the number one killer. If you get comfortable, and it basically is the comfort zone, if you get comfortable with your your annual sales as they stand right now, that's fine and dandy. However, I'm going to tell you that it's going to eventually begin to head in the opposite direction. And then you're going to be faced with a, a situation of having to scramble really, really hard in order to make up or get back up to your comfort zone level. By that time, it may be too late. Your cash may be gone. There's other factors that could be in play. You might have lost your major account. So now you have, you're going to have a greater acquisition cost to bring on new business. All right. I just wanted to cover this term of hyper growth because to me, it's an extremely important element for business leaders to consider, to plan, to have dialogues on a regular basis with your key executives and officers within the, and key people, your key talent within the organization, your organization, and make sure that, that things are headed in the right direction relative to growth. And the, the concept of 2X in your business is, is not a far-fetched or outside the boundaries of possibilities. Everything is a possibility if you look at it. If you really have an open attitude, open mind, and you want to be successful long-term. Long-term success comes from the ability to double your business faster than other people. It also increases the wealth of the organization so that your exit strategies are much, much uh, better, let's just say, um, improved. You, can, you are now in charge of the exit strategy versus somebody else offering you uh, a lower amount of money. All right, our wealth. So that's it for today on the uh, hyper growth. I want to thank you for, for tuning in and watching the, uh, the wild man from Louisiana. I uh, living in Memphis now. I don't know how I got up the Mississippi River to this far north, but uh, by the way, it's cold outside. And uh, anyway, you take care. And I will be checking in later with some more infrastructure uh, process work or video to, sh to share with you. And the next one will be on sales. So tune in. Thank you for watching today. Take care.